Hi, this is Ilias Likolakopoulos, Bernardo Lopez and Manos Brilakis, presenting case 118 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case that illustrates some of the challenges with identifying and treating the culprit vessel for ST segment elevation myocardial infarction. The patient was a 49-year-old man who presented with inferolateral ST elevation myocardial infarction. Coronary angiography demonstrated the filling defect in the mid-LAD, although there was uh, preserved undergrade flow, maybe slightly sluggish. And the cranial view, again, there was a lesion in the LAD that uh, was subsequently successfully stented with a nice result. However, there was no collateral flow to the right coronary artery. The possibilities are that the RCA is completely occluded or potentially that the right coronary is anomalous. To identify it, one option is to do a CASP injection. This is an example, but no right coronary artery is obvious. This is a different view. Once again, there is no obvious right coronary artery. A left ventriculogram was done that uh, showed inferior hypokinesis. However, the right coronary artery could not be identified here as well. And this is sometimes the case. This appeared to be the right, but actually this was the circumflex coronary artery. So the left ventriculogram or the aortogram is not always perfect for identifying an anomalous coronary artery. So what to do? The solution came from coronary CTA, which is the modality of choice for determining the presence and location of anomalous coronary arteries that demonstrated that the right coronary artery was actually originating from the left cusp, very close to the origin of the native left main. So this explains the difficulties in engaging it. Moreover, there was significant disease in the proximal and mid-segment of the anomalous right coronary artery with actually formation of aneurysms. Also, cardiac MRI was performed. That was very useful because it showed that there was a small area of infarction and edema, but the majority of the inferior wall was viable. Based on that, the patient was referred for attempting percutaneous coronary intervention of the anomalous right coronary artery. The most important difficulty in this patient was to engage that anomalous coronary. We first tried with an Amplage 1 guide catheter together with a guide extension, but uh, unfortunately the guide extension kept on entering into the left main and would not go into the anomalous right coronary artery. What we did after trying several times was to change to a JL4 guide catheter, which actually helped visualize for the first time the origin of the right coronary artery, literally very, very close to the takeoff of the left main. However, selective engagement was not feasible, and in cases like this, one way to perform percutaneous coronary intervention is to wire the vessel and use the wire as a rail to help with engagement of the guide catheter. This is a workhorse Sion Blue Guide wire that did enter into the anomalous right coronary artery, but then there was not enough support and actually the wire kept on uh, prolapsing back into the aorta. So we made some progress, but once again, the wire would prolapse back. To overcome this difficulty, we used a Caravel microcatheter together with a polymer jacketed Sion Black guide wire, the hope being that there will be less resistance to advancing the polymer jacketed wire than otherwise uh, would be the case with the workhorse wire, and also that the microcatheter would help support the wire to advance further. So here is the Sion Black, which indeed seems to be advancing along the course of the vessel. This is uh, much further than we had done before. And then after advancing slowly the Caravel microcatheter, we did have more support to continue advancing the guide wire further down. So here is after gentle manipulation of the wire that uh, eventually it uh, finds its way and uh, goes down into a vessel. The microcatheter was inserted and an injection was done. It turns out that the vessel we were in was not actually the right coronary artery but was a large acute marginal branch. Nevertheless, given the difficulties with head with engagement, 
we ended up uh, advancing the wire further down in this branch. And then we were able to insert a wiggle wire that helped support the guide a little bit more and helped more with equipment manipulation. So here it is advancing the microcaster further down and then inserting uh, the wiggle wire. The next step was to use uh, the guide extension to more selectively engage the vessel and get more support for delivering equipment. And this was achieved um, using the telescope guide extension. To advance it further, we used the inch warming technique with a small balloon being inflated, then deflated, and then that helped advance the guide extension further into the right coronary artery. Here is an angiogram through the guide extension. We are indeed in acute marginal branch, but we can now visualize the right coronary artery, and we can see the significant lesions in the proximal as well as the mid portion of the vessel. The challenge now was to wire into the right coronary artery, and this was done by pulling back our guide extension and using a dual lumen microcatheter. So the guide extension was pulled back, this is the twin pass torque microcatheter, and this is a workhorse wire advanced uh, through the over the wire lumen of the twin pass that uh, successfully advanced uh, all the way to the distal right coronary artery. Stents were subsequently placed in both the distal as well as the proximal right coronary artery, and this provided a nice result with Timmy 3 flow into the right coronary. We want to perform intravascular ultrasound, which unfortunately would not fit through a six French uh, guide extension. So to do that, uh, we ended up switching our guide wire for a grand slam, which is a highly supportive wire. And then after doing that, we removed uh, the guide extension and then pushed the guide over the wire that assumes this um, peculiar for, uh, form, but then successfully engaged the right coronary artery and we were then able to advance the IVUS all the way to the distal RCA to check our result. The stents were well expanded. There was indeed an aneurysm at the area of the stenosis, but the stents were well expanded, um, and um, there was a nice result all the way to the ostium of the right coronary artery. So in summary, this is an example of the synergy between non-invasive and invasive modalities. In this case, the right coronary artery could not be identified in the cath lab, but then the coronary CTA revealed when, where was the origin of the vessel. That enabled us to successfully engage the vessel using a JL4 guide, as well as a variety of techniques, using a polymer jacket wire with a microcatheter to wire, using a guide extension to selectively engage the vessel, using a dual loom microcatheter to redirect the wire to the distal right coronary artery, deliver stents, and then uh, eventually obtain a nice result recanalizing the right coronary artery. Thank you.